What's up everybody D-Man back welcome to a brand new video and today we're going to be doing another Godzilla X Kong the New Empire discussion video and really a broader discussion about the MonsterVerse as a whole. Is this the first video of the year or the last video of the year? I don't know. <laughs> Which of the days is this coming out on? Hmm. I guess we'll see. Either way, I thought this would be a fitting discussion to either end the year or start the new one, considering it's kind of building upon the discussion we had on New Year's last year, where we talked about the future of the MonsterVerse post Godzilla vs. Kong. Now I want to talk about the future of the MonsterVerse post Godzilla x Kong The New Empire. This video is building upon the discussion we were previously having on the channel a couple days ago, where we were talking about how Godzilla Minus One may have impacted impacted Godzilla X Kong. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you go and check it out. And I do recommend you watch the video rather than comment first based on the title. Common issue on that video. But basically to summarize my thoughts, I think the MonsterVerse has been following a flawed logic with movie to movie entries where they are chasing the wrong things each time and they're taking the wrong lessons away from the feedback they get. And I think Godzilla Minus One is going to help them reshape and redefine the way they look at the MonsterVerse because Godzilla Minus One drew a hard hard line in the sand to say, hey, the critiques you've been getting for the MonsterVerse, they're not what you think they are. And I think that key difference is going to help them redefine the way they look at the MonsterVerse moving forward. The MonsterVerse has a very unknown future. As far as Skull Island is concerned, season two is a big maybe, and while the writers and producers have optimistically said that our chances are as high as 90% of getting a season two green light, it's still unknown because Netflix is known to cancel projects very late into development due to slight underperformances. Netflix is chasing an algorithm, and if there's no guarantee that season two is going to yield results in their algorithm, they're just not going to do it. With a show like Pacific Rim the Black, the only reason it got a second season is because it was built into the contract for season one that it would have two seasons, and Skull Island doesn't have that. As far as Monarch Legacy of Monsters, season two is registered with the Directors Guild, then it seems like it's a surefire bet that we are going to get it. Theoretically, the show will have a larger budget if it comes back, which means we could have more interconnectivity with the films. Also, given how Godzilla X Kong will be released at the time season two comes out, it could relate to that movie. I know that Sarazawa was planned for season one, but Ken Watanabe couldn't do it. He had to decline due to, I believe, scheduling conflicts. And so maybe a season two could introduce him or a Ren Sarazawa or some of the other MonsterVerse cast members that we're aware of already. And you can start to build out the broader MonsterVerse that way as well. Monarch Legacy of Monsters has overall generally received pretty positive reviews with the majority of the compliments dealing with the focus on the smaller scaled story with stronger characters in a more serious tone. I don't think that's going to be a lesson that's lost on them. I think they are going to take note of that. People don't need the world to be in constant danger. Although Monarch Legacy of Monsters is building to a global threat, it isn't the core crux of the show. The show is still focused on the very small-scaled story about the characters. As far as the MonsterVerse films go, well, there's simply no plans for any future movies at the moment. Legendary likes to do things on a movie-by-movie -movie basis. This gets into Godzilla X Kong, and I want to talk a little bit about how Godzilla X Kong might do. These are going to be my very very early predictions. I'm not a box office expert, nothing like that, but I do think we can kind of start to read the room and get a bit of a feel for how things are going to go. The Godzilla X Kong trailer sort of kind of underperformed. It really didn't get the traction or the positive word of mouth that the Godzilla vs. Kong trailer had. And people are heavily criticizing the fantasy elements within the trailer, and in particular that Godzilla design is a big point of controversy. So will Godzilla X Kong the New Empire do well when it comes out? It's kind of impossible to say at the moment, but word of mouth is going to be key. I mean, the release schedule isn't too bad. April has been a massive month for movies in the past, producing hits like Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, the Super Mario Brothers movie, and Captain America the Winter Soldier, as well as many more. But it's also produced some big underperformances and major stinkers like Morbius, which proves it's not just a solid month for the box office overall. It still has to be a good movie to drive people to the theaters to see it. Our closest point of comparison here is that Rampage was released in April of 2018, and it did fairly well with the $428 million box office based on a $120 million budget. I think that's kind of in the ballpark of how Godzilla X Kong could do. As far as the competition goes, well, Godzilla X Kong will be coming out two weeks after Ghostbusters and Kung Fu Panda, so I guess it's kind of possible that people will not want to go back to the theaters so quickly, but I wouldn't count it out based on that. I wouldn't underestimate either of those two films, and I do expect that they're going to do fairly well and that they might have pretty strong holds week to week, but Godzilla X Kong is still coming out two weeks 
weeks later, it'll get the premium screens from those films. So I think it could do pretty well. The week after Godzilla X Kong is pretty empty, but two weeks after the movie Civil War comes out, which I also wouldn't underestimate. I think this film has a lot of traction and buzz online, and it is going to snag the IMAX screens away and the premium screens away from Godzilla X Kong, which does take a huge hit to the box office. It can't be understated how helpful premium screens are to the box office. Just after that is the movie The Fall Guys. So again, there is a pretty healthy competition going on in this time frame, but Godzilla X Kong is a certain niche that is different than all of those. However, with franchise underperformances this year with films like Transformers Rise of the Beasts, it's still possible that Godzilla X Kong could be in some trouble here. I think Godzilla X Kong is going to do pretty all right. I think it'll likely do better than Godzilla King of the Monsters, but worse than Godzilla 2014 and Kong Skull Island, and I would predict that it's going to land somewhere around the Godzilla vs. Kong mark in between the $400 million and $500 million range. I would expect the majority of that comes from the international box office as well. The budget for Godzilla X Kong The New Empire is going to determine how well that box office feels. For instance, a $400 million box office based on a $160 million movie, that's pretty good. A $400 million box office based on a $200 million movie is not as good. It's kind of unknown how much Legendary actually cares about the box office for the Godzilla movies because they do make the majority of their money through merchandise and figure sales. So they still have massive sources of secondary income coming in in relation to these movies, and so I wouldn't count that out of the discussion either. And Godzilla X Kong The New Empire was basically a movie built to sell toys. A lot of the driving decisions behind the scenes came from how do we sell more toys? How can we make the movie more marketable to that audience? Will we get a sequel to this? I think Legendary is going to try and take it one movie at a time, but I do think we will. I think the only way we don't get a sequel to The New Empire is if Godzilla X Kong does significantly worse than King of the Monsters' $387 million box office, which I don't think is going to happen. I think that we will get a sequel, but the number of sequels is going to depend on that box office. I think anything over $500 million, and we will likely see a few more of these films get releases. If it's under $500 million, I could very well see them maybe just doing one final one and ending it. It's kind of hard to guess how people are going to feel about Godzilla X Kong The New Empire, but based on that trailer, it's not looking great. It's so early on, but there's so much negative buzz and generally low interest in this movie, and like I said, the trailer did not capture the general public the way that the Godzilla vs. Kong trailer did. That trailer basically brought the world together for a while, and it is one of the highest and most well-received trailers in YouTube history. On the other hand, Godzilla X Kong's trailer hasn't fostered any meaningful discussion that have been ongoing outside of the fandom. It's possible that the MCU has simply burnt people out of these comedic adventure films, and Godzilla X Kong seems to be the bit of a Thor Love and Thunder compared to Godzilla vs. Kong's Thor Ragnarok. Seems like they may be just trying to have a little too much fun with this movie, and them not taking it seriously could backfire the way that it has for many MCU films lately. It's also possible that Minus One redefined what it means to be a good Godzilla movie, and has shown people how much better a serious version of Godzilla can work than they thought. A serious version of Godzilla can work just as well as the campy version that America has produced, and in many cases it can work better, and for the first time ever the general public is becoming aware of that. So what comes next? What's the future of the MonsterVerse? Well, these are my personal predictions, I could be entirely off, again those toy sales really could curve the entire thing back in this direction even further, but I strongly believe that course correction is on the horizon. I think they're going to take a few years off from the films to focus on Monarch for a while, because that show is doing well, and they're going to try and put out some more seasons of that. I'd love if they just did one last season of Skull Island to wrap up the plot and then they trash the show. It's not very well done in the first place, and it's certainly not a good inclusion to the universe because it's so incoherent to the broader MonsterVerse. So I do one last season then quietly put it to bed. I think Monarch could be a place to develop the MonsterVerse in some really exciting ways. For instance, if the show gets a bigger budget in the future, imagine if we started to get solo episodes dedicated to monsters like Rodan and Mothra. That way you don't throw money away on a solo film that's not going to turn profit, but instead you make a grand solo adventure for a monster like Rodan or Mothra in the show, and then it can just be a big selling point for the season. That would be really cool. While I don't think that's necessarily the direction they'll head, I do think that is an avenue they could explore, and I do think that Monarch Legacy of Monsters is going to continue to do well from season to season, especially if they start to include more monsters. That's going to be a big thing that's going to get people interested. What I think they really need to do is consolidate the MonsterVerse, make a proper series bible, and stop with the continuity errors and the mistakes because it is taking an impact on the fan base. I think in the meantime, personally, 
if it were my call, I would release a smaller scaled film like Kong Skull Island 2. And what form that film takes is kind of up to the direction that they're able to head. If I could get Jordan Vogue Roberts back, I would strongly consider doing the story of Hank Marlowe and Gumpy Akari stranded on Skull Island. If I couldn't get Jordan Vogue Roberts back, or even if I do get him back but I want to do something a little different, I would try and get the entire cast of Kong Skull Island back because it was such an A-list cast. That movie is the highest grossing film of the MonsterVerse, and I would tell a story where they must return to Skull Island for whatever reason. Does that really make sense for the universe? Is it needed? Absolutely not. But it could be a great way to stimulate the MonsterVerse and keep it in the general public's minds while you kind of work on what to do in the meantime and figure out where you're gonna go. I would then include some small setup in this Skull Island film to set up future elements of the MonsterVerse so that it still feels like an important entry and one that you don't want to miss. Meanwhile, I would go back to a far more serious Godzilla, and I think you're gonna see them swing in the direction of Minus One, taking Godzilla back a bit more serious. I don't think they'll go as far, but I think they're gonna try and course correct Godzilla in particular, as every MonsterVerse Godzilla film has truly just been a course correction based on how the last one was perceived. I think they're gonna take Godzilla back to the surface. If it were up to me, I would separate him from Kong for a while, and then I'd give him another Toho monster to fight, and build upon the world of Godzilla King of the Monsters. For people who are resistant, stepping back into the serious tone, and for people who say, just let Godzilla be fun, we can have the fun Godzilla, and we can have the serious Godzilla. It's okay to have both. It is okay to have both, but it isn't done very well. The tone of the MonsterVerse was not planned. Every single director who has been involved with the MonsterVerse has swung the tone in a different direction based on what they want the universe to be. Had Gareth Edwards continued as he was supposed to, the tone would have remained very serious and grounded. Had Doherty returned, he would have remained just as sci-fi heavy and without the other silly elements that Wingard introduced as King of the Monsters was. And a lot of people argue that it's okay because the Showa movies did this. We're just going full Showa. We're doing the thing. Well, sure, if that was the point, then maybe that could be a fun thing, that we're building the universe in kind of a mirrored, paralleled version to the Showa era. But we're not doing it on purpose. In fact, the Showa movies didn't even do that on purpose. Toho didn't mean to do silly stuff either. That was simply done so that they could compete with other franchises and television in order to stay relevant, and the only audience they felt like they could continue to capture the attention of was children. While those Godzilla films did save Toho's butt, it also bankrupted the franchise and had diminishing returns, proving those films don't have the appeal needed to sustain the box office long term. While one or two silly Godzilla adventures might be fun, if you look at the general trend of those Showa films, they were trending downward. And if you look at the trend of the MonsterVerse, it's also trending downward. That's why I do think a course correction is needed. I'd take Godzilla back to the surface. I'd make him more serious, cover those pink dorsal plates up, make him blue again, take him back to a bit more of a King of the Monsters styled Godzilla. And when you do that, I would introduce a very serious, cool Toho monster for him to fight, someone like Violante. Maybe then I would do one more Kong film after this, set pretty much entirely in the Hollow Earth, seeing him rule over as King, fighting some sort of Hollow Earth threat, again, separate from Godzilla. I'd maybe take things back to the surface at the end of the movie for a very exciting return to Skull Island, for say, or for a very exciting final battle in New York. We haven't seen the monster vs. Kong in New York, and it kind of feels like that's a place he could and should go. So that could be a fun way to try and tie things back into the King Kong franchise history and make an exciting entry that isn't reliant on Godzilla. Then depending on how that previous Godzilla movie release did, I might squeeze one more Godzilla film out if I feel like I could, if there's a good story to tell. And then finally, I would do a King Kong Godzilla reunion, a destroy all monsters finale to end the whole thing, at least for a while, to give it a break so that people don't get burnt out on the universe and these films. Most importantly, and this is honestly the thing the MonsterVerse needs to do in order to survive. Most importantly, I'd know my ending in advance. That way things are never left open-ended. That way there aren't things that don't have payoffs. That way the universe feels like it matters. Godzilla vs. Kong was clearly the end game. That's what they thought they were building towards and they didn't know that they were going to do more. And you can tell because Kong Skull Island and Godzilla King of the Monsters have this inevitability heading straight for Godzilla vs. Kong. And then Godzilla vs. Kong came out and it was a good finale to the first arc of the MonsterVerse. And then they just went in whatever direction we're in now, where every entry is so disjointed. Monarch Legacy of Monsters has no connection to Skull Island, which has no connection to Godzilla x Kong. And I feel like that's another thing that plays into the consolidation of the universe, making sure that these things matter and feel like they should be seen, but not making them so over-reliant on one another the way that the MCU has. There's a big difference between putting subtle hints 
reference to the future and making your movie feel like a trailer for the next movie. That's what the MonsterVerse does really well, is making each story feel like a full and complete story, and I wouldn't lose that. But I would make sure that I knew my end game so that I knew what I was building towards. That's also a good way to just make sure all the filmmakers are kind of on the same page in terms of where they're headed. And that is a big thing the MCU is currently lacking and is getting backlash as a result of. All right, those are my thoughts on the current state of the MonsterVerse, where we are, where we're headed. What are your thoughts on all this? How do you currently feel about the MonsterVerse? How are you feeling about this kind of phase two that we're in? Also, where do you think the future of the MonsterVerse is headed and where would you like it to head? Those are two different questions. Where do you think we're going and where do you want us to go? This video encompasses all of my thoughts. Split Godzilla and Kong up for a while, make that team up still feel special by making it rare. Go back to developing the ideas set forth in King of the Monsters because they were very interesting and don't have any payoffs. Take Godzilla back to the surface and make a Godzilla movie. Don't make a movie that Godzilla just kind of cameos in the way that he's seeming to do in the new Empire. Godzilla playing support in the new Empire feels about as strange as Godzilla showing up at the end of Godzilla vs. Megalon to do a final fight. That movie's not about him. That was a Jet Jaguar solo film that they introduced Godzilla into last second. Same way that this was a King Kong solo film that they introduced Godzilla into mid-development and you can tell. Thank you guys all for watching. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. If you want to support the Patreon, you can use the link in the description below. By supporting the Patreon is the most direct way towards supporting this channel and making sure that I can keep making videos like this for you guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out.